Hey guys, this is Clinton Jeff and here's a look at the brand new Nike Air Max 2090. The 2090 is the latest in Nike's Air Max line. It's supposed to be related to the Air Max 90 in a way, but more futuristic, I guess. Hence, that's why Air Max 2090. In fact, you'll actually see that Nike maintained many key aspects of the Air Max 90 in this shoe as we go along. The original Air Max 90 dropped way back in 1990, which was 30 years ago. Wow, 30 years. It just feels like yesterday. How old am I? The Air Max 2090 retails at about $150, which is a little high, but I think Nike is trying to position this as a premium lifestyle sneaker. And oh yeah, even though the Air Max series is historically meant as a running shoe, and Nike is kind of loosely pitching the 2090 as a performance shoe, make no mistake, the Air Max 2090 is a lifestyle shoe. All right, let's kick off the review with design and construction. As you can see, I got the launch colorway, which is named Pure Platinum, but the Air Max 2090 also comes in a whole bunch of different colorways, including a really cool ice blue colorway, and there's also a volt green and blue colorway, a fuchsia purple and yellow, or if you want something really low key, there's even an all white version, and of course, an all black version as well. Or if you want something more similar to the OG Air Max 90 colorway, there's even a duck camo Air Max 2090, which is still sitting on Nike.com because apparently nobody wants that colorway. Starting with the upper, it's mostly covered by this translucent mesh. The mesh is pretty lightweight and somewhat see-through. I know a lot of y'all are not really into translucent elements on a shoe, but I actually really like this because it means whatever socks you wear under the shoe will actually slightly change the look of the shoe, which in turn is pretty cool. This textile liner goes right up against your feet and generally feels okay, but doesn't really have as much stretch as Nike's Flyknit Upper. Towards the toe box area, there's an additional layer of protection to prevent your toenails from poking through the mesh, and it has a slightly glossy finish to distinguish itself. You'll see the same kind of fused overlay near the lacing area surrounding the eyelets to strengthen the durability of the upper here. They've also accented it with this neat cyan blue stitching that I really like. The lacing and eyelets are in a loop style mechanism where the black flat laces intertwine through them. And underneath the laces, there's this black mesh tongue, which has this weird rubberized ring inside a diagonal cutout, which has the Nike swoosh symbol and the lowercase air logo, which is cut off halfway. This is a really weird design element and I'm not really sure what it's supposed to do. I guess it's kind of a pull tab, but it just feels a little weird. But I guess it looks cool. Coming to the inside of the shoe, there's a black sock liner and you'll notice it's a one piece internal booty construction and the tongue is attached as well. Moving on to the insoles, they're the usual Air Max insoles and this one's in black with 2090 printed on top towards the heel and the Nike Swish logo in a cyan blue. Moving on to the mid panel of the upper, there's a black Nike Swish logo outline that is embedded within the outer layer. Just like the OG Air Max 90, the swoosh here is slightly cut off at the bottom, which is accented with this red stitching. The red stitching is on the mud guard, which is another element from the OG Air Max 90. But this time around, the mud guard is a white synthetic plastic material, which runs across both sides of the shoe. Towards the back of this area, there's the air logo done in lowercase and cut off halfway. The back of the shoe has a ton of padding in the heel and that foam padding definitely adds up to the comfort of the shoe, but it's also rigid enough to give you support to the back of your heel, which also definitely helps with a very secure feeling heel lock. On the outside of the heel area, there's another mesh-like finish, this time in black, covered with this rubberized heel tab bumper with grooves that protrude out, which is another element from the OG Air Max 90. One really cool element is that you can see the words air and the Nike swoosh symbol within this. Above that, you have this bright infrared pull tab rope, which is in the same color as the accent on the mud guard. Moving on to the midsole, it's a pretty chunky midsole with a white colored foam on the forefoot and a thick air unit towards the heel. The foam is actually really soft and kind of feels like Nike's React foam, 
but Nike has not actually mentioned it anywhere, so who knows what foam this actually is. Meanwhile, the air window on the back is 200% bigger than the standard air unit used before on the OG Air Max 90, and it's housed within the silver color TPU shell that towards the back has the same ridge pattern as the heel tab on the back of the shoe. Moving on to the outsole, it's made out of a gray rubber with grooves on the forefoot that are similar to the waffle outsole on the Air Max 90. This groove pattern was meant to give you better flexibility with the shoe and it seems to allow just that. And then towards the top of the toe area, there's a hit of that cyan blue again with the Nike Air Max logo towards the center of the outsole and the Nike Swoosh logo towards the heel area. All in all, I actually think it's a pretty good looking shoe, but let's move on to fit and construction. Coming to fit, the Nike Air Max 2019 seems to fit true to size. I'll give you the usual disclaimer that if you are like me and you have wide feet, you might want to go up half a size since these do run a little narrow and the upper isn't very stretchy, but they also happen to be really long shoes, so in that case you would end up with more space in the toe box area. I mean, if you all weren't in quarantine right now, you could go to a Nike store and try these on. But all in all, if you have narrow feet, I think this does fit true to size. In terms of comfort, these were actually surprisingly really comfortable to wear. They're a lot more comfortable than the OG Air Max 90 or even the newer Air Max 270s. The combination of that huge air unit and whatever the secret foam Nike is using here makes for a shoe that actually has really great soft cushioning. This shoe is actually really comfortable to wear and I think they make really great everyday wearing shoes. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the Nike Air Max 20. 90 on feet. All right, now I know that Nike has made a lot of Air Max shoes over the years, but I really do feel like this is the best Air Max we've seen in years. Not only just from a comfort point of view, but also design. This is a really cool looking shoe, and I love how they made all these tiny little callbacks to the OG Air Max 90. Nike has really been killing it lately with their sneaker releases, and I do feel like this is just another great shoe in the collection. All right, guys, that's what I think about the Nike Air Max 2090. Let me know what you think about these sneakers. Is this a good colorway, or are see-through elements just not a great idea? Also, more importantly, are you thinking about getting one? As always, if you have any questions about the Air Max 2090, make sure to ask me right in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me directly on Instagram or Twitter at Clinton Jeff. And hey, if this video was helpful, don't forget to hit the like button right below, or maybe subscribe because that would be appreciated. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.